local, live, late breaking. West Two News Sunrise starts now. If you didn't know him, uh, it was one of the biggest missed opportunities you probably ever had. Hearing from the family who lost a teenage boy to gun violence, how he's saving lives after his death. Plus, a fire ripped through a home in Ocala overnight. The neighbors who helped firefighters figure out who was stuck inside. Good Saturday morning to you, Central Florida. Thank you so much for joining us this weekend. I'm Gail Pascal brown joined by first morning meteorologist Eric Burris. Nice. Yes. I think it's going to be a nice day. It's going to be a nice day. Today's definitely going to be the day to go outside of yeah. the weekend. Tomorrow we'll start off with a lot of sunshine, but into the afternoon we'll get into some thunderstorms. So okay. Just plan accordingly and you'll be good to go. Let's take you outside, see what's doing this morning on a Saturday morning, dark and early, downtown Orlando. Actually looking quite nice. The moon up there on the top left part of the screen. Looking nice, kind of masked in some clouds, but uh, no big rain producing clouds this morning. Now, later today, we may see a few showers. We're going to go with a 20% coverage of rain under partly to eventually a mostly cloudy sky. In terms of the temperatures, 60s out the door. So as Gail said, it's nice outside. 70 degrees, 9 a.m., 78 for us by lunchtime, and we'll top off around 80 degrees. For now, 64 in the city, that's not bad. 60 degrees in the villages, it's 57 in Ocala and 59 in Palm Coast. Temperatures are running about, uh, oh, five to 10 degrees warmer, so it's nice. Yesterday, though, I had some layers on when I was out at the Speedway. Eh, today, you won't necessarily need it as much. Here's first warning live Doppler radar showing that nice quiet sweep. So for today, 70s to the lower 80s, and we do expect a few quick passing showers, but nothing compared to the thunderstorms that are in the forecast come tomorrow. Let's take a look at future casts and kind of discuss our weekend when I see you in just a couple minutes. All right, Eric, thank you so much. And a Popka family is mourning the loss of 18-year-old Jake. Jacob Gerald, the Lake Brantley High School graduate, was shot and killed last weekend. West Shoes Liv Johnson tells us how his family and friends are remembering him and how he's saving lives even after his death. In Marion County, six men are facing charges accused of having child porn. One of these men is a teacher in Lake County. Now, deputies say these six men were identified by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children for having the child sexual abuse materials. A four-day operation followed that report. In the sting, law enforcement knocked on their doors and confronted these individuals and asked if they could search their electronic devices. In this case, our detectives made contact with these six individuals and they decided, yeah, I'll, I'll let you look. And maybe they hoped that law enforcement wouldn't find what they had on their phones uh, or their other devices or anything like that. Uh, but in their case, we, we knew where to look and, and we located it. All of the individuals arrested are facing several counts of possessing child pornography. One of the men, Michael Kozinaroski, is a teacher and volleyball coach at Eustis Middle School in Lake County. Now, the school district says the board decides on all terminations, and its next meeting is Monday. In Seminole County in Altamont Springs, man is facing charges for possession of child sexual abuse material. The FDLE arrested 34-year-old Leonardo Castro after receiving a tip about files of abused children being uploaded online. Agents say they found 10 digital files on his devices with victims as young as four years old. A Winter Park man is facing charges after officials found drugs and homemade bombs in his home. Now, it happened along Alina Court yesterday, not far from Cimarron Boulevard. Police went to investigate 40-year-old Mark Severson's home. While looking for drugs, they came across possible explosives. Nearby homes had to evacuate. Now, eventually, investigators decided to dispose of the explosives instead of moving them. About an hour ago, I want to say, there was like a big explosion in the house. It was pretty scary for a couple minutes, so we just kept inside and I just kept look out. Severson faces multiple felony counts, including possession of explosives and manufacture of explosives with intent to do bodily harm. The judge ruled that he will be kept on no bond due to the public safety concern. 
Time now is 5.08, and our West 2 crews were all around Central Florida yesterday for our 38th annual Share Your Christmas Food Drive. We were live from six different food drive locations, collecting food and money for Second Harvest Food Bank. Things wrapped up around 6.30 p.m., and our friends at Disney World stopped by to help the cause. We came here with a little bit of extra Disney magic today. Uh, we brought some extra special friends and we are excited to share that on behalf of Walt Disney World Resort and all of our cast members that we are donating $100,000 to Second Harvest Food Bank. That's right. Disney donated $100,000. That equals food for 400,000 families right here in our community. It was a great way to end our day, and we want to thank you all so very much for helping us. And here's a final look at our total. We've raised more than $540 thousand dollars. What a great cause. And Eric Burris, what great weather we had for that event yesterday. 100%. And by the way, if you're still into that sort of thing, mm -hmm. it's not too late to give, right? right. Just head to wesh.com and share your Christmas and click on that share your Christmas tab. Um, it's feeling a little less like Christmas maybe than it did yesterday. Kind of watching those temperatures come up just a little bit this morning. We're in the 60s now. We'll be to about 70 degrees by nine o'clock and we'll watch a couple of tiny showers this afternoon. It's not going to be too bad at all, but you can see there's still some moisture in the area. Uh, the clouds from overnight are moving out, so we actually are going to have some clearing skies next couple of hours. Then some of that moisture kind of sneaks in. So here's a look at Futurecast. 10 o'clock this morning, looking pretty good. Bright sunshine. Lunchtime, it's going to be beautiful. And then into about the 2 o'clock time frame, Futurecast painting a couple little showers in there. So again, it's a 20% coverage of rain. We'll see a couple of clouds too. But that said, we look Look ahead to tomorrow and we'll see not just a couple of showers, but a line of thunderstorms moving our direction. Let's talk more about it when I see you in just a couple minutes. All right, Eric, thank you so much. So many of us play that lottery for that slim chance at a life-changing prize. But one lucky winner in Osceola County has not come forward yet and time is running out. What will happen if the millions of dollars on the line slips out of their hands? This first warning weather update is sponsored by the Law Offices of Dan Newland Injury Attorneys. To everyone who answered the call. Thank you for sharing your Christmas. The need keeps growing, but so does your generosity. The partnership with WESH over the last 38 years is what helps to bridge the gap. Your donations on Giving Tuesday, our mobile drop-off sites, and our virtual food drive. will provide more than 2.1 million meals to local families in need. You can't do this without the support of the community. Thank you for creating hope. Thank you for sharing your Christmas. Welcome back, everyone. The Seminole Tribe says it will start paying the state again as part of a deal over gambling and sports betting. That's one condition of the 30-year deal known as the Compact. State government officials gave the Seminole Tribe control over sports betting, but it must pay Florida at least $650 million over the next year. Now, this deal also gave the tribe permission to offer new casino games like craps and roulette. The agreement also allows the tribe to add three casinos on tribal property in South Florida. A $44 million lottery ticket was sold in Kissimmee months ago, and now the winner has only until Monday to make a claim. West Coast Haley Crumbleholm takes a look at what will happen if no one steps forward. Wow, do you need a ride to Tallahassee? All right, the city of Kissimmee's Festival of Lights is powering up today. This annual holiday tradition is one of the most anticipated events of the year for residents. It starts at 4.30 p.m. at Kissimmee Lakefront Park. There will be photos with Santa, crafts, cookie decorating, and snow. Yes, snow in Florida. When the sun goes down, you can watch the nighttime holiday parade, and all the lights will be shining brightly. Parking is free at all parking garages and lots in the area. I'm ready for the snow. Yeah, well, as long as you know that we're not getting the real thing. <laughs> I, know. I don't think you're ready for that, though. I know, that's right. <laughs> nice day today. We yeah. could be in for some surprises tomorrow. Yeah, we'll have a couple of afternoon storms. I think all in all, the weekend is looking nice. Okay. You know, you were talking about that event. If you're in Seminole County, let me take you over to Sanford. The Christmas parade tonight, uh, the beautiful parade of lights. It's going to be a lovely forecast, comfortable temperatures with readings in the lower 70s. Now, outside at this hour, just a few clouds over top of us. 
no rain or anything. 64 degrees our current temperature at the Orlando International Airport. It's 59 in Deland, 62 degrees in Daytona Beach, and 71 in Melbourne. There are clouds around, and you can kind of see those clouds exiting out. Some clearer skies prevailing, so I think we're going to have a lovely morning. But our next weather maker, this cold front here around Texas, Arkansas, and Oklahoma, just getting going. And over the course of the day today, this thing's going to get some nasty storms developed across the deep south. You can already see some of those storms kind of amplifying up there in Mississippi and Alabama. So forecast today includes a few showers and that's it. It's not going to be a nasty day at all. 77, our 11 o'clock temperature, working our way up to about 80 degrees for a high temperature. 80 in Orlando, 81 degrees in Claremont, about 80 degrees in Ocala, and 79 for us in DeLand. Now here's Futurecast. 10 a.m. kind of showing a few clouds around. Lovely lunch hour. There's a couple of those little popcorn showers that Futurecast is showing. Nothing too scary, though. Uh, through 6 o'clock, same kind of idea, though. 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock, we start adding and adding the clouds because that storm system starts sweeping in our direction. And by tomorrow, particularly in the afternoon, we'll get those stormy conditions before it all sweeps on through and we usher in some cooler temperatures. So let's look ahead to our Sunday together, okay? Okay. When we chat with you in the morning, it's going to be a nice and quiet setup into about lunchtime. Still quiet, but we're starting to watch the radar as these storms approach. By 3 o'clock, uh, Futurecast indicating a line of nasty storms approaching from the west, and then as it works in, it starts to weaken. But don't be surprised if around dinner time tomorrow night, we have these showers and storms marching through uh, by about bedtime or so clearing on out. But you notice it really loses that intensity as it pushes through central Florida. The threat for severe weather does not include our area for now. It's basically the panhandle up to the north into the Carolinas. But it is something we're watching. It wouldn't surprise me if the west coast kind of gets added to this level one out of five risk for isolated strong to severe storms. But again, I think for us, it's going to mainly be tomorrow afternoon into the evening. So for today, if you want the better of the days from cover to cover, it's going to be today. 80 degrees, 20% chance of rain. Tomorrow, quiet until about the afternoon, then we get that 70% coverage of showers and storms in there. All right? All right. Here's Central Florida's most accurate seven-day forecast. Showing those storms in there, we've got it as a uh, impact day just to let you know that those storms will be around and one or two could get a little stronger. But remember, we get stronger storms almost every day in the summertime, so it's nothing to be scared about. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, lots of sunshine. It's going to definitely get cooler. 63, our Monday temperature, about 50 to wake up on Tuesday, and then those temperatures stay Staying in the 70s all the way through the end of the week. Yeah, I like that cooler temp coming in, that's for sure. The Coco Tigers are facing off against the Bradford Tornadoes in a big-time matchup in Tallahassee. How defense led them to a second straight state championship. Plus, the Orlando Magic is looking to get back into their winning ways at home. The highlights from a dominant win over the Pistons. All this and more next in sports. That is it for sports. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Closed captioning brought to you by National Floors Direct. Local, live, late breaking. West 2 News Sunrise starts now. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. You're watching West 2 News Sunrise, and here are the top stories we're following for you this morning. One person is dead after a house fire in Ocala. These are pictures from the scene last night on Northwest 24th Court. Crews got there around 9.45 p.m. and reported heavy smoke and flames in one of the front windows. Neighbors told them that the person who lived there was still inside. That person died at the hospital. Investigators are trying to figure out how the fire started. And a 28-year-old Melbourne man is dead after after crashing on I-95 near Palm Bay Road last night. State troopers say he lost control of his sedan and ran off the road around 7.15 p.m. The car spun out and drove off the side of an embankment. It went airborne before crashing into the other side of the ditch. Now this crash is still under investigation. It is 5.30 this morning. If you're just waking up with Wes and first warning meteorologist Eric Burris joins us now. And you know what I'm excited about, Eric? Do you know? Ma'am. I'm just waiting for that little cold that's going to come this week. Yeah. Just a little. Yep. We've got another another little dose of it. Uh, yeah. Temperatures are warming up though for today and tomorrow. So okay. just plan accordingly for that. Uh, but it's a lovely start to the day yeah. this morning. i got to tell you, I was all kinds of bundled 
pulled up yesterday at the Speedway. This morning, maybe one less layer for us, which is pathetic because it's not even that cold yesterday. Uh, but you get the idea, right? A few kind of thin clouds, starlit sky here. Looking out over Lake Doran to varies on our Tower Cam network. Uh, forecast starts us off with partly cloudy skies. Temperatures in the 60s will work into the upper 70s by 11 o'clock, 79, 1 p.m., and 80 our high temperature. But also notice into the afternoon particularly, oh, a couple of passing showers, 10, 20 percent covers. Not too bad, but just something to keep tabs on. 64 right now in the city. We're in the 50s for Leesburg, the Villages, and Ocala. It's 60 degrees in Daytona Beach and 71 in Melbourne. So we're running 5, 10, even 15 degrees warmer than yesterday. But where do we go from here? We know there's a cold front moving our direction, but how does it all play out? Let's look at our Saturday in depth with brand new Futurecast data in just a couple minutes. All right. All day yesterday, our West 2 crews were all around Central Florida for our 38th annual Share Your Christmas Food Drive. We were live from six different locations, collecting food and money for Second Harvest Food Bank, including here at the West 2 studio. I can't think of a better way to spend my day than giving back to the community that I love so much. Our friends at Walt Disney World also helped the cause with a big donation. Disney donated $100,000. That equals food for 400,000 families right here in our community. We want to thank you all so very much for helping us. And here's a final look at our total for the day. We've raised more than $540,000. And it's still not too late to donate. Just go to WESH.com and click the Share Your Christmas tab. Happening today, the Nobilo Foundation Shopping Day is starting up later this morning at the Hunters Creek Target. The volunteer-led event pairs you and your child with another child from a low-income school. You can then go shopping with them with $120 the foundation gives. You can even continue shopping with another child with another foundation donation. Over 1,000 children are expected, so the organization, the organization is asking for as many volunteers as possible. Registration is open now. We'll be live from the event in the next 30 minutes, so stay tuned. Also in Orange County, Okoye police say they found the vehicle involved in the murder of a veteran. Someone shot and killed Gregory Reed last month at the BP gas station on the corner of Clark and Silver Star Roads. Police are still looking for the shooter. Now, anyone with information is asked to call Okoye police or send an anonymous tip through Crime Line. That number is 1-800-423-8477. In Orange County, a man in his 20s is recovering after being shot last night. Deputies say this happened along Woodard Cove Court in Winter Garden. They tell us he's expected to be okay, but no word yet on a possible suspect. In Volusia County, DeLand police are looking for a shooter they say fired a gun into a home hitting a woman. It happened around 7.30 Thursday night along Sherwood Drive near Beresford Avenue. Officers say the woman was hit in the shoulder and is expected to be okay. It's believed to be an isolated incident. No arrests have been made. In Flagler County, we now know the name of the suspect in the spray painting of hateful messages around Flagler Beach. They say 70-year-old Liam Mackin is a citizen of Ireland who has an address in Flagler Beach and may be out of the country. Officers say six properties were vandalized and the businesses were either owned by Israeli nationals or people of Jewish heritage. The South Florida mother accused of locking her adoptive son in a box in the garage is now looking for a new attorney. Tracy Farrader's attorney requested to withdraw herself from the case, citing irreconcilable differences. Now, what those differences are was not made clear. The judge also denied a motion to continue the trial. That gives Farrader until next Friday to have a new attorney to file a notice for appearance. Time now is 540 and time to check in with Eric Burris. And I know that uh, we're excited about the weather today, but we have to make sure that we have our umbrellas for tomorrow. Yeah, I would just say tomorrow, like late afternoon. So for the most part, during the day, it's going to be fine. And as a matter of fact, for today, it's going to be pretty okay. A shower or two is going to be about it. Uh, here's a look at what to wear, though, all right? Long sleeves, perhaps, out the door. 
but like the t-shirt long sleeves, you know, more laid back. It's not too chilly. Temperatures for the metro are in the mid-60s. We're in the 50s north of town, but we're in the 70s back over to the Space Coast, and we're headed to 80 degrees today, so comfy clothes definitely over top. All right, here's a look at the setup. We've got clearing clouds, so we'll start to see that beautiful sunrise this morning, and it's going to be a good one. Here's Futurecast kind of showing through lunchtime. Great stuff, but yes, a few showers in the forecast through today, so it's going to be about a 20% overall coverage of rain. But tomorrow, that's all different. A line of showers and thunder showers is moving our direction. And one or two of those could get a little heavier. So where could the heaviest weather be? And when do the storms move into your neighborhood? We'll time it all out using brand new Futurecast data, what I see in just a couple minutes. All right, Eric, thank you so much. We're taking a look at the top items on the docket for the upcoming state legislative session. The budget is like giving the legislature a grocery store. What they cook with it is up to them. The concern some insurance experts have about the governor's insurance plan. Welcome back. We're just about a month away from the start of the Florida legislative session and one of the topics hitting the docket home insurance. Right now, the average cost for homeowners insurance in Florida is $2,400 a year, with premium hikes becoming routine. Governor Ron DeSantis announced his plan for that issue. Western News political reporter Greg Fox explains why insurance experts are, are worried, rather, that it might not work. The legislative session in Tallahassee begins January 9th and runs through March 3rd. All right, if you want some furry fun with four-legged friends, check this out. Polk County Animal Control is hosting its annual pet fest at its facility on DeCastro Road in Winter Haven. It runs from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. You can adopt for free. It includes spay, rabies vaccination, microchipping, and the county license. There'll also be food trucks, pet-friendly products and kids' activities, and even Santa for a picture with your pet. That's always a lot of fun. Ma'am, I know. It Are is. You, you're going to take pictures with your pet. Oh, my little Stella. She's so grumpy. Oh, is she's she? so grumpy. <laughs> she's, she likes going out, but also, you know, I feel like her vision's not oh. so good. So it's, you know. We'll take her out today. It'll be nice oh, weather. Yeah, we'll take her out around the neighborhood, take her in the backyard. She'll be so happy. Absolutely. But it's just around other people. She doesn't know. Eh. <laughs> Poor thing. It's okay. All right, let's talk a little bit about the forecast, though. Yeah. It's going to be a lovely sunrise this morning. Oh. The clouds we have over top are going to start to clear on out. A little bit of a haze, but it's not too bad. There's Daytona Beach uh, looking fantastic. 60 degrees, our current temperature there. We're at about 57 in Leesburg, 59 here in the villages, 64 in Orlando and 71 degrees in Melbourne. So it's a great start. First warning, live Doppler radar showing some showers off the shoreline, nothing over top of us. And you can kind of see that clearing taking place. So it's gonna be a really nice morning. In terms of our 12 hour forecast, how does our Saturday shape up? So it's nice and cool-ish this morning, a little warmer than yesterday, about 79 a.m., 78 by lunchtime, and we'll all warm to about 80 degrees, give or take exactly where you live, but you get the idea. And about a 10, 20% chance of a few passing showers this afternoon. It's not gonna be a bad day at all. Here's Futurecast kind of timing it out with beautiful sunshine, but by two o'clock, we start to watch these teeny tiny showers popping up, so it's just something to track, no big deal there. And then overnight tonight, we'll continue to increase the clouds because our next storm system will start to move in. So there's that southerly wind, warm temperatures today. Then for tomorrow, most of the day is actually going to be okay. But we'll be watching the storm system getting closer and closer to us. And particularly, there's 6 p.m., particularly around dinner time. Depending on which model ends up being most accurate, we'll say we've got this stormier setup moving in. So for now, taking all the data we have and putting it together, I'm thinking from about 2 to 5 p.m., our northern area, Areas and our western areas getting uh, showers and thunder showers through the metro around 5 p.m. and then working 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock back over toward the Space Coast. Here's future cast. I think it has a really good handle on things. Lunchtime, we are good, though we're building the clouds and it's going to be a nice and warm day. Then by 2, 3 o'clock, things are starting to work into the I-75 corridor. About 4, 5 o'clock, starting to move into the metro, but the overall intensity coming down. You notice the there's less.
less and less oranges and yellows on the map. 7 p.m. showers and storms kind of working through the metro and then clearing as it works over toward Brevard County. Looking at all the data, I think gusty winds is going to be our biggest concern. The threat of severe weather for now is north of us. But this does not bode well for the Falcon Heavy launch. They're targeting 814 tomorrow. Clouds, rain, storms, definitely something we'll have to watch. So for today, mostly cloudy skies by the afternoon, 20% chance of rain. Tomorrow, those afternoon thunderstorms, one or two could get a little feisty. And then Monday, Tuesday, bright, beautiful, chilly sunshine moving into town with morning lows in the 40s once again for many of us Monday and Tuesday. One teacher is working hard to make her students' holiday wishes come true. Her viral video that brought in support from across the nation. This first warning weather update is sponsored by the Law Offices of Dan Newland Injury Attorneys. Good morning. A Las Vegas high school teacher is getting support from across the nation this morning. She's trying to check off her students' wish list lists. Brett Forrest tells us how her TikTok has ignited a generous gifting spree. That is such a wonderful story. So far, Ms. Guy says the gifts have fulfilled 350 of the 900 wishes on the student wish list, and she hopes all of them get granted before December ends. Oh. In Orange County, the city of Ocoee is hosting its Jolly Jamboree and Holiday Tree Lighting event later today. It runs from 3 p.m. until 8 p.m. on McKee Street in downtown Ocoee. The event kicks off with a holiday dog parade with the tree lighting ceremony starting at 7. It's free and open to the public. You can also enjoy lots of activities, including an ice slide, a zip line, carnival rides, and face painting. There'll also be horse rides, carolers, and, of course, pictures with Santa. A new hour of West 2 News Sunrise starts in just minutes. A multi-million dollar lottery winner has not come forward yet where all that money will go if not claimed by the upcoming deadline. Plus, hearing from the family of a teenager who was killed in Apopka last week, how he saved four lives after his death. <laughs> 